Okay, guys, welcome back to part two. Uh, and <laughs> again, what we're doing uh, in this part of the video is playing a game called Parabolic Dunes or Splash Chevrons. And, and the point here is to determine whether or not uh, these now vegetated cover sand dunes are windblown deposits or if they were caused very rapidly due to a splash or a tsunami um, caused by these same chunks of ice that created all of these Carolina bays uh, that originated from the Saginaw Bay. Uh, so, so let's take a look at these. Uh, we'll look at them a little closer. Obviously, I'm a little biased. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, be showing you these, uh, claiming that they are splash chevrons. Um, I showed you in part one some different examples of windblown sand deposits uh, versus tsunami-driven um, sand deposits. Uh, these are a little bit on, on a smaller scale, but not by much. Um, some of these uh, can uh, got got pushed around quite a bit. Um, but again, let's use that information and uh, try to determine whether or not we are looking at parabolic dunes or splash chevrons when it comes to these Carolina bays. So um, this is Big Bay. I'll get back to Big Bay here in a few minutes, but let's go ahead and head over to my second example. Uh, we're going to be using the LiDAR, uh, kind of going back and forth. It's You can see right here, you know, it's very difficult to um, see these features without the LiDAR. Uh, but once that LiDAR clicks on, you know, you could definitely see that there's something there. Um, and, and again, you know, there's, there was obviously a pre-existing river here. Uh, and as the chunks of ice were coming down and creating these Carolina bays, some of them obviously fell into a pre-existing source of water, you know, whether it be a lake or, or a, a river and pushed the sand and water out in a certain direction, creating these Again, uh, I'm, I'm going to call them splash chevrons, you know, uh, but creating a, a tsunami, pushing that sand and water up into off, you know, onto the banks and then back down. And so this is a great example of this. And it goes, you know, pretty far down the river. You know, we can see this happening quite a bit here. And of course, it's not everywhere. So there had to have been a pre-existing source of water for these to, to occur. All right, let's go to uh, number three here on my list. And again, we'll go a little bit farther south. Uh, there's Bamberg, South Carolina. I've talked about that before, and I'll get into it again. Um, okay, here's a great example. Um, let's let this catch up. And you can see here, I mean, this is pretty uh, interesting because I don't think that this was a pre-existing river. Um, there may have been a lake here, um, and the a, you know, a chunk of ice landed into the lake, pushing all of this sand out. But... This is pretty impressive, uh, and there's a lot going on here in this picture. And let me just use my measuring tool and see how far it is from, you know, the now creek to the end there. And that's over four miles. <laughs> so, so this sand got pushed in one direction, uh, you know, that classic chevron shape for four miles. Um, and, and then the impressive part is that then you still have Carolina Bays being formed inside of that so again we're looking at a very rapid succession of of you know carolina bays being formed this sand being splashed out uh with water and then more bays coming down and so uh so this is a great example of what i'm what i'm talking about here but what do you guys think you know parabolic dunes or splash chevrons let's go to number four <clears throat> head uh, a little bit farther south a little bit lower on the coastal plain here and uh, let's see, what do we see here? Let's let this catch up. And yeah, for sure. You know, here we go. We've got a, a you know, a pre-existing river and then these classic chevrons being formed. Uh, and you can just see how, you know, how much sand and water got pushed up uh, creating these chevrons. Good example there. Let's go to number five on the list here. And I found lots of these, by the way. These are just some of the ones that I thought were more impressive. Um, you know, and this is one of the reasons why in part one I showed you how to get your own LiDAR and uh, play along because uh, there's lots and lots and lots of things to see here. Um, just need a little bit of geologic background to try to figure some of this stuff out. Um, all right. So speaking of which, same thing, you know, classic Chevron shapes here. Uh, obviously a pre-existing river. Uh, we had Carolina Bays falling. Look, at this is a great example right here where we had a splash around and then one of these very large Carolina Bays cutting that out. 
Uh, but then this one must have been much earlier, and the splash came in. And then here's another smaller one. So there was a lot going on here. Very, very, very rapid, um, you know, chain of events. Uh, very detrimental. I mean, this this was terrifying. Had to have been. Um, okay, this five. Let's go to six. Now, six is one that's pretty interesting to me, uh, and this is actually where I'm going to be taking my next video because, you know, after all of this ice would have fallen, you know, been sent from the Saginaw Bay area of the Laurentide Ice Sheet, falling down onto this area, creating the Carolina Bays, creating these splash chevrons, um, you know, again, great example of a splash chevron here, but all of that ice over the next few days or weeks had to have melted and had to have run off. And then that's where I'm going to take this next. Uh, and this is a great example of that. This is one of the places I'll probably start my next video, but I wanted to show the splash chevrons first. Um, a great example of that pre-existing river. Uh, and then we have all of these bays on the sand deposit itself. And then a lot were probably washed away due to massive flooding after all of this uh, ice had to have melted. Um, so great example there. And one more I wanted to show you uh, that shows this even better. Uh, it's a little bit farther south. Again, a little bit lower in the coastal plain, but not by much. And uh, again, you can hardly see anything without the LIDAR. And this is pretty amazing. I mean, look how, look how broad this, this floodplain is. And right in the middle here, we have these splash chevrons that we've been talking about. And, um, you know, and then we also have evidence of some Carolina bays in the area. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, and so anyways, this is a, a good place for me to stop. Uh, and again, I'm going to be setting up my next video with this, these same images uh, because we're going to be focusing on the outflow of water afterwards. But for this video, again, we're focusing on whether or not we're looking at parabolic dunes or splash chevrons. And what do you guys think? You know, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming up. And uh, it's, you know, very exciting. So stay tuned and I'll catch you later. Bye.